The ultimate crossover comparison and versus video is here. Can an Imperial Titan defeat or kill a Godzilla? So here in this video, we will first compare the biggest of these battle titans of the Imperium of Man from the Warhammer 40k universe against three Godzilla variants from the Toho and the American movies. This titan would be the Emperor Titan which includes the Imperator and a subclass the Warmonger while the three Godzilla variants would be Minus One, the Monsterverse Godzilla and Godzilla Earth. We will compare their stats, their sizes, their powers and durability and see which Godzillas would be able to stand against a lone titan or whether or not the titans have the ability to bring down the king of the monsters. So let's get to it. Let's start with the most common factor of comparison, size. The Emperor Titans are said to be the biggest of the god engines of humanity in the Warhammer 40k universe, only outsized by the mysterious Castigator class, which was only one of its kind and has now been destroyed by the Grey Knights. Anyway, the Imperators and the Warmongers, which are both Emperor class Titans, were originally stated to be so large that they could be seen from orbit. But after retcons, more modern estimates put them at around 55 or 60 meters in height, around 182 to 200 feet tall. On the other hand, these three Godzillas are chosen here and each of them are of a different size category. The smallest is Godzilla minus one, which measures just a bit taller than 50 meters or 164 feet, while the most diverse Titan Titanus Gojira comes in at 120 meters or 393 feet. And the biggest here is Godzilla Earth, which has a standing height of more than 300 meters or easily around 1000 feet, you know, in freedom units. That means that Godzilla Minus One is the only version here that is of the same size scale as a Titan from the Warhammer 40k universe. The Masterverse Godzilla is twice the height, while Godzilla Earth is 6 to 7 times taller, with hundreds of times more in overall volume. What about speed and agility though? Well, Godzilla from Minus One is one of the slowest Godzilla variants, only seem to be able to walk at a speed that is equivalent to a fast human sprinter, so around 20 miles an hour or 32 kilometers per hour. Godzilla Earth is also a slowpoke, but his size makes up for it, as with every step he takes, it's a hundred meters of stride length, therefore this gigantic kaiju would be faster than minus one. Anyway, Godzilla from the Monsterverse is a different breed. He has been seen to run and sprint towards his enemies and because of this size, his running speed is actually impressive, even if it looks kinda normal. He can have bursts of speed up to 300 to 350 miles an hour, or 480 to 560 kilometers per hour. The Titans, however, walk at a very slow pace due to their size and the huge cathedrals on their heads, but since their strides are somewhere between 4 to 5 seconds apart and each stride would cover around 20 to 25 meters, that gives them a walking speed, a pace of around 20 kilometers per hour, which is a huge disadvantage compared to the Godzillas here, as the Titans are highly outclassed in speed. But what the Titans lack in speed and funny enough, in size as well, they make up for it with their highly advanced and super destructive weapons. The largest and the most powerful being the arm mounted plasma annihilator cannon and also the hellstorm cannon, both which are powered by the huge plasma reactors installed on the titan's body. The hellstorm cannon, despite being labeled as a directed energy weapon, actually launches colossal shells comparable in size to battle tanks. This powerful cannon has the capability to rapidly transform the terrain, creating new canyons and burying adversaries under massive amounts of soil and rock by collapsing entire hills. The Plasma Annihilator's Discharge is a form of plasma that when unleashed by this weapon explodes upon impact with all the power of a miniature sun, forming craters of hundreds of meters in diameter and turning sand into glass. The Titan also possesses Vortex missiles which when fired creates a hole in the fabric of reality, dragging matter into the immaterium. It is a sort of a wormhole weapon or a black hole weapon that strips everything clean of the surroundings. Those are the three deadliest weapons of the Imperator. The Warmonger on the other hand also has the Vortex missile and with it, it also has the Vengeance cannon and a Doom Strike missile launchers as its main weapon systems installed on the hands. The first being an enormous long range laser cannon while the other is an enormous missile launcher that fires at extremely long distances and completely decimates the landscape, effectively being a weapon of mass destruction. Both these Titans classes also have 6 hardpoints for other plasma destructor cannons, also for inferno guns, melter cannons, a quake cannon and gatling blasters which have lower fire output but can fire more rounds to deal with lesser threats. All in all, this means that the Titans have a level of destructive capability that far outclasses any kaiju 
or Titan from the Monsterverse, like I said, while it lacks in speed and size, it makes up for it with massive sets of weapons that can lay low entire armies with a few shots. The Godzillas in this topic on the other hand have the Atomic Breath, which is their main range attack. The minus one Godzilla's Atomic Breath has a very long loading time and the power output of a nuclear bomb when it impacts a target. The Monsterverse Atomic Heat Ray doesn't have the nuclear explosion, but it has high penetration power and a very high temperature that is higher than the surface of the sun and was stated to be 3.15 to 10 to the power 14 joules which translates into 75 kilotons per second. With it, this Godzilla was able to bore a hole to the center of the earth and when in desperation he can unleash a nuclear pulse that is equivalent to a thermonuclear explosion. And yeah, Godzilla Earth on the other hand has a very different atomic breath. He fires a highly accelerated particle beam which allows it to pierce through anything and also have the explosive after effect. With it, he was able to destroy cities, entire cities with a single blast and also even deal with wormholes and vortex points that open up in the sky letting Void Ghidorah into the world from another dimension. So this atomic breath could in effect cancel off the vortex missile of the Titan, which is a weapon that does the same thing as it opens a rift in the fabric of space-time. Godzilla Earth also can generate a powerful plasma shockwave that travels at supersonic speeds and cuts everything in its path and has the capacity to absorb radio waves making him impossible to detect using radar and other targeting systems, except when he's firing his atomic breath. So all of that is impressive and for a Titan to be able to defeat a Godzilla, it has to also withstand and endure attacks from the King of the Monsters. That means we have to take a look at how much power their Void Shields can take and as well as their durability of their adamantium plated armor. So these Titans, their main defense are their Void Shields which are energy shields derived from 12 generators which are called void shield generators. Then beneath all that, they have the most durable alloy known to man as their armor plating. The void shields can withstand salvos from entire artillery barrages, as well as from explosions that can be considered tactical nukes in the kiloton range. But beyond that, the void shields would be powered down. But there is also another chink in the armor so to say. The void shields extends 30 meters away from the titan's body and it doesn't stop projectiles or slow moving targets from entering inside which is why the Titans are also accompanied by hundreds of Skitari soldiers that prevent boarding actions by infiltrating enemy soldiers. On the other hand, the main defense of Godzilla's are their highly heat resistant and impact resilient scales, which varies among the three variants. Godzilla minus one has the weaker scales, but has a high regeneration ability. Most of us Godzilla has skin that can take hits from city destroying beams like the Proton Scream and also from the gravity beams of Ghidorah, but it'll hurt as hell. And he can also absorb nuclear radiation, so nukes are not really helpful there. Godzilla Earth has metallic skin and also has an EMP shield that can block explosions of hundreds of nukes all at once. So there you go, the different scaling of defense and armor of the Titan and the Godzillas. So now that we know the important information about the weapons and the armor of these two combatants, let's take a look if an Emperor Titan can take down minus one, you know, minus one Godzilla. Well, given that this Godzilla's only advantage is its healing factor, which is also limited, an Emperor Titan could win over this first entry easily. The Titan can withstand the atomic breath of minus one. And even if this blast takes down its void shields for a while, it'll be quite some time before minus one would fire another round and therefore give the Titan ample time to counterattack and completely annihilate the Kaiju with all of its weapons. Or the Titan could fire first and without giving this Godzilla any chance to react. But can an Emperor Titan take down the larger Titanus Gojira? That's a good question indeed. Let's see, if this Godzilla can close in with his running speed and evade the Titan's weapon salvos, then the Emperor or the Warmonger as well would be torn to shreds. Its atomic breath can also break down the void shields in a few seconds and then given that this Godzilla can fire his breath for minutes on end, then it's death to the Titan and the princeps within it. But if this Titan can get a direct hit with its Plasma Annihilator or the Long Range Missile Salvos and the Hellstorm Cannon, then this would slow down the G-Man to a halt or even weaken him to a state that he would need to take a breather. Then the Titan could fire the Vortex Missile and if it hits, it would do the trick. It would just suck in Godzilla back to the Immaterium piece by piece. So with minus one, it's definitely a Titan victory. With the Monsterverse Gojira, it's more of a 50-50, maybe more tilted to the Emperor Titan by a smaller degree.
Now finally, can an Emperor Titan defeat Godzilla Earth? So this is the largest version of the King of the Monsters. It is also the hardest to detect in the targeting systems, since he absorbs radio and other waves directed at him, therefore making him stealthy, and if the Titan fires, it's a 50-50 chance that it'll hit him. He is stealthy like an Eldari Phantom, let's say. He also has a form of force field too, an electromagnetic shield that can withstand hundreds of nukes at once, therefore making him impervious to any of the Titan's plasma and conventional weapons. Even the Vortex missile which rips a hole in reality can be countered with his atomic breath, which he did with the Ghidorah's Vortexes, which is more or less the same. His atomic breath can overload the Void Shields, and the Plasma Cutter can shatter the Titan's legs in half in succession of attacks. Therefore, even if the Emperor Titans could defeat the smaller Godzillas, there is absolutely no way it can take down Godzilla Earth. This mission is left for the Emperor of Mankind to deal with. So can a Warhammer 40k Titan kill Godzilla? Well, it depends on the variant of the version of Godzilla. Minus one, okay, he can do it. Titan's Gojira, maybe. You know, 50-50. And Godzilla Earth, no way. So if you like this video, then check this other one as well. And if you want to browse for other Warhammer content, then check out our channel. Subscribe and like for support. Also, bang that bell icon for notifications. Till the next time, take care, boys.